What's up guys, Crave here, and I hinted at this in a previous WoW upload, but here's a guide for completing your Improving on History achievement or the Balance of Power questline from the Legion expansion. The rewards are basically artifact skins specific to your class. It unlocks the first tint in a row, and it's really up to you if you want to work on the remaining three other colors. As of the last time I did this, which is about, I think, a month or two ago, uh, the achievement is still not account-wide and a lot of RNG is still involved in some parts. With that, keep in mind that most of the 25 quests are actually pretty easy to complete. It's really just a matter of luck on whether you can get this done in two or three weeks or, or even more. For all I know that uh, when this video gets published, Blizzard might decide to make the achievement account-wide and remove the RNG elements. For now, here is the actual guide. I'll leave timestamps in the description box below and just pause whenever you need more time for any section in this upload. So here are some things to keep in mind when you start out this questline. The first thing is that to trigger the whole thing, you need to have completed your class order hall's quests. So once that's done, Kalex should show up in your hall's artifact room or in Azure Wing Repose. The second thing to keep in mind is that there are reputation requirements for some of the quests. So basically, for Court of Ferrandis and Azuna, you need to be honored with them. For the Valajar of Stormheim, you need to be revered with them. For the Nightfallen and Suramar, you need to be revered with them. And in addition to doing that Nightfallen storyline or getting the rep requirements with them, you also need to complete the Moonguard Stronghold storyline. Now, to complete that story, or at least to start that story, uh, it's somewhere in the coordinates of 27, 21 in the Suramar map. However, to be able to start the story, you need to unlock Shalaran and complete the quest aptly named Shalaran. After that, travel to the Stronghold. You'll know that you can start the uh, Moonguard storyline when you see an ice block being attacked by the Nightborn. It will also help towards... Uh, the end of the whole quest line if you can activate the moon guard teleporter but it's not really required third thing to keep in mind is that all mythic dungeons will require full completion with the exception of the optional boss in dark heart thicket number four all raid runs will have to at least be on normal difficulty number five 30 blood of sargeras is needed so if you need to farm these there are multiple sources uh, some from gathering professions dungeons and you can also buy them from your order hall quartermaster in exchange for order resources, although the exchange is pretty hefty. And number six, it's not a big deal, but you will need your original artifact weapons for the last quest. Quest number one is Power Within, and it's given to you by Kalec. Now, he basically tells you to go to Azure Wing Repose in Azuna coming from your order hall's artifact room. If you are experiencing issues in seeing Kalec, he may already be in the repose. Quest number two is also straightforward, and this is called the Heart of Zinajari. So this is given to you by Senegos, the big blue dragon that is just beside Kalec. Now, it means obtaining the Heart of Jin Ajari from the Mythic Eye of Ajari instance. Now, the heart is located just before you trigger the final boss of the instance, or the Wrath of Ajara. Now, the next three quests, 3, 4, and 5, can be taken at the same time, but it's really up to you if you want to turn them in all at the same time. Quest number 3 is a Vainglorious Past. Now, you get this from Senegos, and it means obtaining the Vainglorious Draft from Veridis in Azuna. Now, it, he shouldn't be a stranger to you if you were trying to gain rep from the faction, but in case you were using world quests just to get to honored with them, um, I don't know how that works, but in case you don't know where the NPC is, he is at 4641 in the Azuna map. Quest number 4 is Fallen Power, and you also get this from Senegos, and it means acquiring the Corrupted Essence of Oakheart from the Mythic Darkheart Thicket. He is the huge tree boss, or the second boss in the instance. Quest number 5 is called Tempering the Darkness, and you get this from Kalec, and this involves turning in 30 Blood of Sargeras to Kalec. Quests number 6 and 7 uh, can be taken at the same time, but uh, you can only turn one in pretty quickly and I'm guessing the other one will take some time depending on your RNG. But quest number 6 is called In Nightmares and you get this from Kalec. This basically involves looting the uh, Death Glare Iris from Ilganoth and the Horn of the Nightmare Lord from Savius in the Emerald Nightmare Raid instance. 
quest number seven is the essence of power which you get from uh, Senegos and this can be a pain and it's very annoying unless Blizzard decides to change the drop rate but you have to loot 30 corrupted essences from the Emerald Nightmare instance from and they come from the bosses you can also get seething essences uh, from the same bosses which can contain about five corrupted essence for each one of these seething essences Quest number 8 is pretty easy. You just click the Heart of Zinazari, which is just beside Senegos and Kalec, and you just watch the small in game animation. Quest number 9, again, another easy one. Kalec just tells you to see him in Shalaran in Suramar. Quest number 10 is Lost Knowledge, and you get this from Thalrenus, one of the Moon Guard, and it means purchasing the Scroll of Elundris from Thalistra and Shalaran. Quests number 11, 12, and 13 can be picked up at the same time from the moon guard that are hanging around in Shalaran, and you can get them all done before you turn them in the same place. Quest 11 is Right of the Captain from Sirana Starweaver. So you have to loot the Eon Winder from Advisor Vandros in Mythic Arcway. Vandros is the final boss in the instance and will only spawn when all the other bosses have been defeated. So like I said, you have to complete all the mythic instances. Quest number 12 is Literary Perfection and you get this from Lothrius and it means looting the book called Wards, Sigils, and the Nightborn Way from Mythic Court of Stars. You can actually miss the book but its coordinates are 4137 in the instance map. It's right after Captain Gerdo, the first boss. When you defeat Gerdo, just go up the staircase and immediately turn right to get to it. Quest 13 is Borrowing Without Asking, and that's from Thalrenus, one of the Moon Guard. So you have to get the Containment Crystal from Mythic Vault of the Wardens. Now, you can see this item just before taking the elevator leading you further down into the instance. So you have to engage the first boss, the first Demon Hunter boss, and then you have to go through this uh, big Imp Mother who is surrounded by Imps. And just before going down, you should see the crystal. Quest number 14 is called Twisted Power, and this is from Sirana. And this is annoying. You have to loot, again, it's filled with so much RNG, but you have to loot five Legion Portal fragments so that you can create this Greater Legion Portal stone, which summons Vizul the Twisted in Azuna. So any demon can actually drop the fragments. My preferred spot for the six or seven characters that I ran through this achievement in recently is uh, in Valshara with coordinate 6773, just above the Moonclaw Vale name on your map and near the border to Suramar. There are a number of undergrowls in the area that quickly respawn. The time range for completion is from 5 minutes to 30 minutes and basically if you're aware of any other spots with fast uh, demon respawns, that might help. Hopefully Blizzard changes the system to uh, guarantee drops but I don't know. Anyway, once you have the Greater Legion Portal Stone, travel to Azuna with coordinates 2750 on the map. Uh, there should be a summoning area there uh, near the flight point for the Illidari. And uh, basically, you just have to remove the four Eridor casters in the area and use the Portal Stone to summon Vizul, defeat him, and loot the Twisted Bindings. Quest number 15 is called a True Test, and basically you also get this from Sirana. Just click on the Heart of Zinjari, which is beside the Three Moon Guard near Kalek, and watch the small in-game animation. Quest 16 is called Seeking the Valkyra, and you get this from Kalek. He just basically sends you to Stormheim to travel to the Vault of Aeir and uh, to speak with or talk to a Shildir. Quest number 17 is the mark, and you get this from Ashil Dare. So it's pretty easy actually. I did miss this on the first time. Well, on the first character I did this, I was guessing. But basically, you have to stand in front of a year, you have to target uh, the Valkyr, and do the slash kneel. And that's it. Quest number 18 is retrieving this vanguard, and you get this from a shield here. So she sends you to the Mythic Maw of Souls instance to retrieve this 
well, this Vanguard, which is a shield that will act as a plate eventually. And this item is looted in the Nagalfar ship, so that means being the first boss. The actual item can be seen somewhere in the middle of the ship, and once you loot that item, you just have to complete the short instance. Quests number 19 and 20, like some of the others before this, uh, can be taken in at the same time and can be turned in all at the same time as well. So for both of these, uh, Ashildir is the one who's giving you the quest. So the first one is quest number 19, and this is a feast fit for Odin. So the items are spread out throughout the Broken Isles, uh, but you have to loot the Thunderhorn flank from Thunderhorn in Stormheim, the Spine Saver's Spine from Spine Sever, and uh, the Latosk Stake from Latosk in Azuna. If you decide to loot the items in that order, Horn, Spine, and then Tusk, you might want to consider doing getting the horn and then visiting the mythic Neltharion's Lair as it is quest number 20 and then on your way, complete uh, looting the spine and then eventually the tusk. So as I mentioned, quest number 20 is presentation is key. So this means obtaining the four adamantium casing scraps from mythic Neltharion's Lair as I mentioned earlier and you can't really miss them because they're just around the last boss of the instance. Quest number 21 is called Odin's Blessing and you get this from Ashildir. So basically it involves the Halls of Valor on Mythic and you have to obtain Odin's Blessing. Now at the very start of the instance, once you get inside, there should be a very small circle, gold in color, a little bit yellow that you can click. Or at least you have to click the Grand Feast of the Valhallas uh, in your bags when you're near it. This will trigger the quest chain and once you have completed the whole instance, just wait for Odin's longer than usual spiel and then you should be able to click the blessing he will place on top of the standard loot chest. Quest 22 is preparing to move and this is from Kalex so he basically just tells you to fly back to Shalaran and that's pretty much it. Now for quests 23, 24, and 25, and just like some of the others before this, uh, they can all be picked up at the same time and can be completed before turning them all in in Shalron, although I doubt that you could turn them all in just like that, mainly because of one frustrating quest. Quest 23 is the Nighthold Delusions of Grandeur. So it's a very straightforward quest from Thalrenus River Tree. You have to loot two different items. One is the Trelax Core from well, Trilax, and the Millennia Tome from Elisan. Now, the chances of missing these two items are zero, mainly because you have to clear out the whole instance anyway. Quest number 24 is again the Nighthold, but this time Darkness Calls and it's from Kalec. So you just simply have to kill the last boss and loot the Eye of Gul'dan, and that's it. Quest number 25 into the Nighthold, it's from Kalec, and this is similar to your run through with the Emerald Nightmare. You have to loot 20 Night Shards from the bosses of the Raid instance. Now, well, just like that one, unless Blizzard decides to change things, it seems that uh, this will require at least two weeks or two weeks at minimum to complete. Uh, just to share with you guys, two of my characters that uh, did this uh, needed three weeks. So yeah, you can have bad luck. And quest number 26, or the final quest, is Balance of Power from Kalex. So finally, you can just fly off to the Moonguard Stronghold or use the Teleporter in Chalrond if it's, well, active on the Stronghold end. With your artifact weapon equipped, just click the Heart of Zin Najari. Congratulations are in order. You were able to complete the quest chain. Some parts were a pain, but basically you unlocked the first tint in the row. So I hope that uh, you weren't just doing this based on the looks and if you were just basing it on the artifact look, I hope you did your research and realized that it was really worth it to run the whole quest chain. Anyway, I hope this guide helped you out and uh, yeah, so thanks for checking this out guys and I'll talk to you soon.